as intimidating as he was, I, I, I think back also on how accessible he was, though, in the sense that you really understood as his clerk what he was thinking about cases, what he was thinking about the historical events he was um, recounting. He certainly didn't hide the ball. Um, and uh, he, in the roughest language and the most explicit language, would tell you who the heroes were, who the villains were, what he thought about the advocacy we had just seen. Um, yeah, he, he would... Uh, share views about colleagues. He, he read us aloud the letter he was about to read, send to the Chief Justice on the occasion of the annual holiday party, which read, and all of my co-clerks and I have a copy of this, uh, essentially the following, Dear Chief, as usual, I will not attend the uh, annual Christmas party. I still believe in the separation of church and state. So he was letting us into the tent. So as imposing as he was, uh, I, I appreciate as well that uh, he... Um, uh, gave us access to his take on just about everything. And he was, uh, you know, he, he cared a lot about what we thought about things. He listened to us. He asked us questions. There was a real dialogue between the clerks and, and, and the justice. But, uh, gosh, did he know who was boss. <laughs> so, you know, sometimes you would get this treatment of uh, he would point over to his wall where there was a oh, commission, yeah. yes. and he would say, now, What's over there? Could you go take a look at that? And whose name is on that commission? Uh, and then he had this uh, other, th you know, sometimes, in, uh, sometimes people would say, well, you have to do X or Y or Z. You know, you have, like, you have to, you, you, in, that, in that case I told you before, you have to vote for Mr. Torres. And he would say, there are only two things that I have to do, stay black and die. <laughs> <laughs>